In this reading of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh, we continue with Book 1, Laying the Foundation. Chapter 3, Section 1 A New Interpretation, Part 1 Metaphors of the Course and the Bible Friend, David, you said we could talk about and clarify the ego, what the ego is or what we think it is and what it really is instead. It seems like everybody has the same 24 hours, the same day. You have a good day. Someone else has a bad day. You have a great day. The Course is saying that our perception is an illusion and that is why everybody can have these different good days and bad days. Now we, as a majority of folks out here, might not believe that we have the separation, okay? But I believe God is fully aware that we are under this illusion. I am having a real difficult time with my own personal illusion. But I have to deal with everybody else's illusion at the same time. I do not know how to get any real congruency with this thing or how to work this in toward a common basis, so to speak, or a common perception of reality. David, the reason we seem to have a problem is because our perception is so twisted and distorted. It is like we are looking through a lens. If you are looking through a very dark lens, you are unable to see clearly. It is like it says in Corinthians. For now, we see through a glass darkly. Book of Corinthians, chapter 13, para 12. The Course is saying that the only way we will ever have consistent peace is when we have healed we have a healed perception let's go back to one of your earlier statements that god knows about this in fact god being infinite spirit and love only looks on itself in other words love something that is infinite and eternal, does not look on something that is finite and temporary. Now the Course is saying, My child sleeps and I must awaken it. It is like the analogy that you are a parent and your child has been tossing and turning as if he is in a nightmare. As a parent, you do not know what the content of that nightmare is. All you know is that your son seems to be tossing and turning. Metaphorically, God, the Father, gave the answer, the Holy Spirit, to his son to solve the problem. The Holy Spirit is aware of our illusions. Being God's answer or messenger, but He does not believe that they are real. He is very clear that they are just illusions because He is anchored in heaven and knows the true essence and the true reality of the Son. The Holy Spirit has a dual function. You can look at it 
as if he had one foot in heaven, so to speak, and one foot in the illusion, to help the sun awaken. The Holy Spirit is in the mind, working with the mind on giving up the false beliefs and ideas. The only way that perception can be healed is by giving up the false beliefs. Another idea about the ego is that it is nothing more than a puff of madness. The way it is described in the Course is that the whole ego system is a very logical thought system. It seems so sneaky because one premise falls on another. If you have studied logic, you know a thought system is only as good as the first premise. If you have a false premise, then the whole thing is false. That is what makes the ego so sneaky. The basic underlying premise of its thought system is that it is possible that you have separated from your Creator, which is a false premise. All the other beliefs are stacked on top of this premise. One very deeply rooted belief is the belief in time. If you can imagine this stack of beliefs like an inverted pyramid with the ego down at the bottom, at the apex, the belief in time comes right near the ego. Heaven is eternal. There is no time or increment of time. God is. Heaven is. It is the state the Course calls knowledge or eternal oneness. Time is a belief. For example, a lot of times we talk about spiritual paths as if I am on the path to God and maybe in several lifetimes or several more hundred lifetimes I am going to make it back. <laughs> but God is not holding up a carrot or saying, Okay, just a few more millennia. Because God is not involved in time. The idea that there could be time apart from heaven is our intervention is our invention so time is a very deeply rooted belief you were saying that we seem to all have 24 hours a day but the course breaks it down a little further than just our day it basically says that you believe in linear time in which there is a past, a present, and a future. The ego believes in linear time, in which its version of time is. You are guilty in the past. Look at your life. Look at all the things that you messed up with. The things you did that you should not have done the things you should have done that you did not do. Hmm. The ego says, the present is determined by your past. That is a common belief in this world, that your past determines your present. It says, the past extends into the present, and then your future is just an extension of that Two. You are guilty in the past, so you are guilty in the present, and you are going to be guilty in the future. 
That is very depressing. To really get into the ego's use of time is depressing. The Holy Spirit says, The past is gone. Text chapter 28, section 1. Remember when we spoke earlier about how the answer was given immediately to the first belief that seemed to be believed in? When God answered your world of separation, fragmentation, sickness and death, it was answered immediately and was over. All the pain and the suffering and the sickness is over. We are discussing this concept of destiny tonight at dinner. The mind believed it separated from God and the plan of correction of atonement was established simultaneously because God's plan is apart from time. God did not say, Okay, the first hundred billion years you will do this and the second hundred billion you will do that. God gave immediate answer. The correction was given simultaneously. However, for the mind that believes it is in time, it seems to take a lot of years. There seems to be a time lag. The Holy Spirit's use of time says, You are completely healed and free and atoned for in the present and the past is gone. At any instant, at any single instant, if you completely let go of the ego belief system in your mind, you will remember God. This is good news for a mind wondering how long it is going to take to give up all judgments, false ideas and beliefs. The good news is it has already happened, but you just do not believe it. You think that it is still unfolding. Friend, so it is a matter of accepting what has already occurred? David, yes. The mind is terrified of accepting what has already occurred. The ego feels threatened every time you have the experience of sinking down into your mind in meditation. The mind is very afraid of the stillness and the inner light. The ego is telling the mind that if you go back to this light, it is going to get you. You are going to be hurled into oblivion because God is angry with you. Because the mind believes in the ego and listens to that voice, it is afraid of going within. That is the reason why it is easy to get distracted by addictions and things in the world that seem to cover over the pain but never really get to the core belief underneath. Friend, we appear to have good and evil up and down, this dualism. Are you saying that there is only good? That this illusion or this evil that we are seeing in something that we project, not something that we are creating, and that it has no outside metaphysical force about it? David, 
That was a question I always had about this devil idea. The devil can seem very active, powerful, and destructive in your life when you give power to this belief. But the good news is, when you withdraw your mind's power from this belief, when you start to squeeze out the ego's belief system and point it out for what it really is, you can say, No way! This has brought me nothing but pain and misery. I do not want this any more. You withdraw your mind's power from it. It is like the wicked witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> when they throw water on her and she simply melts away. The ego is not overcome by fighting against it or by defeating it. But it is overcome by pulling the plug on it. And you cannot pull the plug on it until you know what it is. Friend, what about Jesus' life? David, Jesus literally transcended the ego and in that sense is a way sure. It is a little different in the course than the traditional approaches that tend to deify him. In the course, Jesus tells us to think of him as an elder brother and says, There is nothing about me that you cannot attain. I have nothing that does not come from God. The difference between us now is that I have nothing else. This leaves me in a state which is only potential in you. Text Chapter 1, Section 2 If you are going to have a model or a way sure to transcend the ego, it is helpful to have someone who has overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Friend, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. Book of John, chapter 14, para 6. David, yes, you can think of Jesus as someone who has transcended the ego and literally is the voice for God that is speaking through him friend. It was as if he was saying, I the Holy Spirit, because that was who was speaking through the person of Jesus. The I, the Holy Spirit, is the way, the truth, and the life. And the Holy Spirit is the truth that is within each of us whether we have ever heard of the person Jesus Christ or not. David, or the Holy Spirit. Friend, or the Holy Spirit. Right. The truth is still there, whether you are in China or India or you are an Aborigine. I had an argument with my cousin about this. We got into a real philosophical and religious conversation. I said, Dick, all these people in Africa that have never heard of Jesus, they are all going to hell? They are all damned? You have kind of damned a whole lot of these folks out there. And he said, Well, they never heard of Jesus. And then I said, I do not think God operates that way, Dick. The scriptures have said that he has revealed those things of the earth. And if you have that expectation to find it, then by chance you might. But if you never seek it or you never expect it, 
then you will never know it when you walk by it. David, that is the basis of what Jesus is saying here about perception too. What you are looking for within. What you are really sincerely, devotedly looking for within. You will see without. In the world. What you seek, you will find. Text, chapter 12. Section 7 Friend, the Bible says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, section 7 David, the course uses educational and psychological terms more so then in the Bible to get at the same initial thing. Also, in the course, Jesus reinterprets certain statements from the Bible that the ego has used for its purposes. The ego loves to quote scripture. There are a lot of things that have been taken out of context from the Bible and used in the name of fear, damnation and hell. Jesus is saying those are just misinterpretations. Some of the thoughts that he has worked with are amazing to me. For example... Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Text chapter 3, section 1. When I read that, I thought, Ooh, Jesus reinterprets it. He says it is as if the Holy Spirit is saying to you, My child, give me that idea of vengeance does not belong in your holy mind. Vengeance is mine. Give it to me. I can handle it. Wow! What a better interpretation of one that I had looked at as a very negative and condemning statement. And about Judas, he says, I could not have said, Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Unless I believed in betrayal. Text, chapter 6, section 1. When you read the traditional Christian stories, it seems like there are twelve apostles and then there is this bad guy. There is the Judas who turned on his master. Jesus is saying that the crucifixion was just an extreme demonstration of how when the fathers and the sons will are lined up, you cannot kill the Son of God. The mind is all-powerful and the body is literally worthless. Jesus reinterprets the crucifixion in the course. The only message in the crucifixion was teach only love. Text chapter 6, section 3. That is a pretty radical interpretation when the ego perceives the crucifixion as one of God's beloved sons had to suffer and die. To be the Lamb of God, literally to take all the sins of all the world on himself. An innocent son had to do it. If you really trace that thinking back, you would still get back to 
What kind of God is it that would have his innocent, beloved son go through a suffering trial and turmoil in order to get to atonement or salvation? From Jesus' perspective, he did not perceive that he was being attacked. Through the ego lens, it looks like attack when somebody is kicking you and spitting upon you and screaming, Kill him! However, Jesus says that he did not share that perception. He saw it was, it is. He saw it as a call for love. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Text, chapter 2, section 5. Jesus calls us to similarly change our way of seeing. We can have such a trained mind that we go beyond the perception of being attacked and learn instead to see everything as either love or a call for love. It takes a highly trained perception. A friend was talking tonight about the soul, about being soul to soul. This is what the Course is saying. When you realize that your brother is just calling out for love, instead of perceiving him as attacking you, then you will respond with love. That makes a lot of sense. It is not that you perceive attack and then somehow forgive out of the kindness of your heart or because you are more advanced spiritually. That is not forgiveness. Forgiveness.